I'm going to use the, con the fictional country of Wakanda as a context for my call for us to reimagine math teaching and learning in a new way. So let's start in Wakanda. Wakanda is the, the fictional kingdom of Wakanda is a small country in East Africa made up of five tribes that were actually inspired by actually for people around um, Africa. Wakanda is the richest, most beautiful, most technologically advanced country on earth because many years ago a massive meteorite made up of the alien ele element vibranium crashed in Wakanda and Wakanda is the only place where it can be found. So now we're going to skip forward ahead to America and we'll toggle back and forth in my talk. So when I thought about what it meant to celebrate something that's turning 100 years old, I had a lot of questions. I wondered, 100 years ago, would I have been here? Were there black women on the faculty? If I got invited to give a talk in a venue as beautiful as this one, what door would I have to come in? Would I be able to eat with the other guests? I wonder. Our, com our college has accomplished many amazing things over the last hundred years. My talk is designed for us to look back as we look forward. I wouldn't have been here a hundred years ago, but I am here now. <laughs> I'm a native of Texas. My parents, my grandparents, and my great-grandparents are all native Texans. A hundred years ago, when my great-grandparents were in schools, they attended segregated schools in a segregated society that used violence to protect structural oppression and systemic racism. Although the Brown versus the Board of Dis um, Education decision was in 1954, my dad didn't attend integrated schools until he was in graduate school in seminary at age 22. My mom didn't attend an integrated school until her sophomore year in high school in 1967 in Fort Worth, Texas. Their school experiences were not designed to be transformational or empowering. They were designed by a colonized system. But the brilliant and amazing black teachers who saw so much in them, inspired them to excel beyond the limits that society had set for them. And so they did. And so today, I try to carry that torch forward. So really seeing the movie Black Panther was inspiring for me because I had never seen an image of a free country of people that look like me and those in my family. The director, Ryan Coogler, talked about how the main character, T'Challa, as a uncolonized free African man made him rethink what it meant to be African and what it might mean to be African American. The direct um, Ryan and his team tried to create an image of a free country of African people an advanced society in every way where gender equality was the norm and racism didn't exist. So how can we use Wakanda to help us think differently about what happens in mass classrooms today? So in Wakanda, vibranium is used as the central resource. They use it to power the trains. They use it to power the cities. They use it to inspire technological advances in medicine and science. They even use it as their national defense system. So if we imagine, for the sake of argument, that in mathematics classroom, the main source, the vibranium, is the math content, take a second to imagine who in math classrooms is seen as powerful? So I'm going to say it again, because if you really think about the answer, it's a little uncomfortable. Who is seen in mathematics classrooms as powerful? Who has voice? Who has agency? Which students might feel the need to assimilate? Because when they look around their advanced mathematics classroom, they don't see other kids that look like them. They're constantly swimming upstream against a sea of deficit and oppressive narratives that dominate our schools. Which students show up to school without this burden? What do they look like? What might it mean to take seriously creating schools for students like T'Challa and Shuri and Nakia? What might it mean to take seriously our work as 
educators, especially math educators, for, to help students develop a positive math identity where they get to see themselves as smart and powerful, not because they're in the advanced mathematics classroom, but because they made a great contribution that moved the group discussion forward. Or they came up with an innovative strategy for a community problem, like gerrymandered congressional districts that compromise accurate representation in a democracy. My research focuses on specifying and articulating the teaching practices that can provide access power and agency for all students, but in particular for black and brown students. So I'm gonna leave you with three things that I think it, what, of what it means to use the Wakandan lens. One, we have to challenge anti-blackness everywhere we see it, in society and in our schools. Two, we have to work to identify where structural oppression and systemic racism are still showing up in our society, especially in our schools, such as the over-identification of African-American students in special ed, or the inhumane discipline practices that often try to control and police small black and brown bodies that are in schools. And three, we all have to take personal responsibility for the curriculum we use, for the teaching practices we employ, for the kind of learning environments we create, and most importantly, how we use our voice and our vote in a democracy. I was giving a version of this talk one time, and a school administrator said to me, Dr. Gaffney, I, those are all good points, but you know what? My teachers don't see color. They just see children. And so my argument then is my argument now. That's part of the problem. My husband and I are the proud parents of two amazing daughters. Our oldest daughter, Bria, is a senior in the College of Education, majoring in middle school math and science. Our youngest daughter, Naima, is 12, and she's an eighth grader at Julius West Middle School. Naima believes that she is a living embodiment of black girl magic. She believes that it flows through her veins and falls off of her like glitter as she moves around the world. And a teacher may argue whether or not she's actually magical, but she really is a black girl. She loves being a black girl. She wouldn't want to be anything else. She draws strength and inspiration from the long line of black women from both sides of her family who sacrifice so much so she can have the life that she lives today. She wants to be the living embodiment of black girl magic. And for a teacher to not only say, not only do I not see her for how she sees herself, but I don't see her for who she really is. Using a Wakandan lens falls to all of us. We all have to challenge the way that we're funding schools, the way that our schools are structured. We have to do the hard and necessary work of decolonizing our curriculum and our teaching practices. We have to work to create more humane and more hospitable learning environments, especially for black and brown children. And in doing so, we can free the next generation of scientists, scholars, doctors, engineers. In the next hundred years, can be more empowering for diverse citizens and more magical, which because of the new lines of ideas and innovation that happen when everybody gets true access. The work falls to all of us. Wakanda forever. Thank you. Yeah.